praises to the living God, glory, alleluia. Come adore the living God, glory, alleluia. The sun and moon may pass away, his word will ever stay. His power is forevermore, glory, alleluia. Glory to the Trinity, the undivided unity, the Father, Son, and Spirit one, from whom all life and goodness come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And let us pause as we prepare our hearts to celebrate this Eucharist. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty of a living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Sin entered the world through one man, and through sin, death. And thus, death has spread through the whole human race, because everyone has sinned. If it is certain that through one man's fall, so many died, it is even more certain that divine grace, coming through the one man, Jesus Christ, came to so many as an abundant free gift. If it is certain that death reigned over everyone as the consequence of one man's fall, it is even more certain that one man, Jesus Christ, will cause everyone to reign in life everyone who receives the free gift that he does not deserve, the gift of being made righteous. Again, as one man's fall brought con condemnation on everyone, so the good act of one man brings everyone life and makes them justified. As by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So, by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. But however great the number of sins committed, grace was even greater. <clears throat> and so, just as sin reigned wherever there was death, so grace will reign to bring eternal life thanks to the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. The response. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open air. You do not ask for holocaust and victim. Instead, here am I. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law in the depth of my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. 
Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. Here yeah. yeah. I am, Lord. I come to do your will. O let there be rejoicing and gladness for all who seek you. Let them forever say, the Lord is great. Those who love your saving help. Yeah. Praying at all times for the strength to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. alleluia. Beloved, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, see that you are dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like men waiting for their master to return from the wedding feast, ready to open the door as soon as he comes and knocks. Happy those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. I tell you solemnly, he will put on an apron, sit down at table and wait on them. It may be in the second watch he comes or in the third, but happy those servants if he finds them ready. The good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. See that you are dressed for action. Beloved in Christ, in every sphere of our lives, we are called to be prepared to face unexpected and unpredictable circumstances of life. For example, sportsmen and women are prepared for the unexpected offenses of their opponents. In examination, students are prepared to face the unknown or tricky questions. Those of you who are parents know that you need to be prepared to face the unpredictable behavior of your children as they grow, as they mature. Preparedness, beloved in Christ, has two sides to it, focus and faithfulness, focus and faithfulness. Today's gospel, beloved in Christ, Jesus uses the metaphor of dressed for action to teach his disciples about preparing for his second coming. And so Jesus presents them this parable, this servant parable, to teach his disciples about preparedness, about being focused, about being faithful. Writing his gospel several decades after, the, after, the, after Jesus Christ would have preached this parable, Luke's, Luke integrates the parable in his gospel as a tool to teach community leaders, leaders who are called to be servants. And so there are two words that Luke uses in this gospel parable. The first word is servant, and the second word is steward. And these words are deliberately, purposefully focused on community leaders, persons who are called to serve the Christian community. So Luke's message is crystal clear. Church leaders, those who are called to do ministry in church, the best way to prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ is to be faithful, to focus on your service. 
what you are called to do. But in reality, beloved in Christ, you and I know how difficult and challenging that is. And so today's gospel reading challenges all of us. All of us who are in church ministry, all of us who have a vocation, whether that vocation is to marriage, whether that vocation is to family life, whether that vocation is as a parent, as a teacher, it challenges us to learn to be focused and to be faithful to the task. But there are many circumstances of life, beloved in Christ, that are potential distractions for all of us. There are those experiences when you and I may feel overwhelmed as we carry out our, our task. There are those circumstances when we feel like we're drowning. Or as the saying goes, we may feel like water more than flour. There are those circumstances in our lives as we carry out our vocation, as we carry out our ministries, respective ministries. There are times when we feel frustrated. We feel disappointed. We want to give up. Or we may experience burnt out or battle-worn. We, have, we feel as if we have no more energy to go, to be faithful and to be focused. There are times when we may experience lack of affirmation, or we may not see the results that we expect. These are real distractions that you and I encounter. And so, beloved in Christ, these are real life circumstances that truly have a potential to make us lose faithfulness and lose focus. So, to be dressed for actions means that you and I must identify and engage in renewal activities. Renewal activities that would re-energize us, refocus us, renew us. And perhaps one of the most fundamental or basic renewal activity that you and I need to engage in is prayer. Whether it's communal prayer as in the setting of the Eucharist or whether it's our personal or private prayer. Prayer is one of those moments, not so much activity, but one of those moments that will enable us to refocus and to re remain faithful. Why? Because prayer is an experience of grace. And as Paul says in the first reading, so grace will reign to, to bring eternal life. So we must purposefully, deliberately engage in prayer. For prayer renews us and refocuses us to keep our focus and faithfulness on our mission, our task. In closing, I leave with you a Jewish interpretation of prayer that says, never pray in a room without windows. Never pray in a room without windows. When we pray, we experience renewal. We come in touch with who God is. But as we pray, we also pray with windows because when we pray, prayer also keeps us focused on our mission. Prayer is not for us to feel good or to appease God. Prayer is, enables us to encounter God because in that encounter, God also wants us to keep, to keep our eyes looking through the window on the mission to which he calls us, the mission to which he wants us to be focused and to be faithful. So remember, beloved in Christ, prayer, never pray in a room without windows. Keep your focus. Keep faithful to the task.
and use prayer as a way of renewing yourselves. Amen. Let us stand, beloved in Christ, as we turn, we turn to our garden in our weariness, in our tiredness, in our frustration, in our need. We cry out to him. We pray for our Holy Father Francis and all the bishops throughout the world as they lead the people of God, as they pastor the people of God, particularly in this time on our sinner journey that our pastors may have the grace of listening, listening to, to the movement of the Holy Spirit in the lives of their people and the world, and also to teach us how to listen. Lord, hear us. And let us pray for ourselves as we celebrate the Word of God and celebrate the Eucharist, that we may allow God's Word and His body and blood to to transform our minds, our hardened hearts, and our hardened minds, so that we may be more attentive to hearing the, and seeing and experiencing, especially in prayer, the movements of the Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. And we pray for the intentions of this Mass. We offer them up to the Lord and ask that the Lord receive them and respond to them. Lord, hear us. We pray for the souls of the faithful departed, that truly the mercy of God may rest upon them. Lord, hear us. And in this Eucharist, as we celebrate the Eucharist as an experience the showers of rain, we wanna pray for those who are homeless, those who live on the streets or in our gullies who will be affected by, by this rain. We pray that through the outreach of the state and the church, and the generosity of people, they may be protected from the ravages of this rain. Lord, hear us. Lord, our God, we ask, Lord, to receive these petitions we have given to you. Grant them through Christ our Lord. Pray, beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, 
through your word whom you made all things, whom you sent through your beloved son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our savior and redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, a font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and to graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Brothers and sisters, as those present in our chapel receive Holy Communion, those of you who worship with us via the electronic media and unable to receive Jesus sacramentally may nevertheless receive him as you make a spiritual communion. Join with us as we pray. Sweet Jesus, beloved Lord, Come into my heart and fill me with your holy presence. Saturate my soul with your love. Give me grace so that I may have eyes to see you in everyone I meet and a heart to love as you love. May everything I think and do and say glorify your name and may I always do your will. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go announce the good news. Thank you. 